Hey, so you made it. You're in the season finale of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made it. We uh, saying it like that makes me think about each month as like a new episode where the plot thickened with unexpected twists and turns. And also time feels really warped. I vaguely remember November having a lot of Tuesdays. But so um, for many reasons, I'm happy that we're in December and the last month of the year has arrived. Yeah, my neighbors finally have their holiday lights on and mm. it's giving me so much life. I relate to that. Yeah, I said recently I want to ride through neighborhoods and see everybody's Christmas lights. And for the first time in, since I was like a teenager, I actually want to decorate a Christmas tree, like a small one. <laughs> But my roommate vetoed it, so we won't we won't do that. Yeah, I mean the holidays definitely feel different this time around. Like I I feel like I need joy definitely. Um, but I th I guess like the only thing that's unfortunately constant is that for um, like a lot of queer people, a lot of LGBT people, the holidays can still feel isolating and lonely. But I guess the holidays this time around, they're going to be isolating and lonely for everyone. Yeah, everyone. you're right. I mean, those are both really important points that I wish more people would realize. But yeah, I mean, in turn, I think you're right. Everyone will probably feel a little more lonely than they had before, if they have before. And it makes me wonder how people will handle it. You know, like um, when I've experienced loneliness, I've rarely ever wanted to just let it fester you know I might have be hopeful that it'll pass soon but I always wanted to like reach for something outside of myself right a desire to turn outward instead of turning inward which makes me think about the word intimacy have you ever heard it broken down by every syllable so it sounds like into me see no I haven't but that's that's cool though yeah right it's like some it's kind of worthwhile to think about especially with turning outward instead of inward and it definitely induces vulnerability which is another easy thing to turn away from um but that makes me think I heard on this podcast that I love the actor and activist Dylan Burnside described mm -hmm. intimacy as the emotional byproduct of vulnerability and he talked about how that's not something negative and that ideally we would experience intimacy in every relationship, not just romantic ones like we commonly think about. And that seems especially relevant now, even though we cannot be in each other's presence like we might be used to over holidays and things. So I'm wondering, how do you think we can draw strength to get through these lonely moments? How can we be less resistant to vulnerability and loneliness? Um. So, so for me, I, I keep finding myself drawing strength from womanist readings of Hagar, the Egyptian slave woman placed in a vulnerable position without autonomy over her own body. Because, um, yeah, Sarah hands Hagar's, Hagar over to her husband, Abraham, to bear a child and a lineage for them. And then Sarah oppresses her to such a degree that Hagar would rather take her chances out in the wilderness alone while pregnant. Nice. And the Bible says that God saw Hagar and sought her in the wilderness and affirmed that the child in her womb is her baby and that Hagar, this foreign slave woman, will be a mother of a nation. And in that wilderness... Hagar finds that she's not alone, that she's never been alone, that throughout her plight, God has seen her. And that wilderness becomes this holy ground where she names God as El Roy, the God who sees me, the God mm. who sees a foreigner who didn't have autonomy over her own body, the God of the oppressed. And she witnesses to us the image of God, an image her masters could not even see because this image of God can only be revealed for the ones who are out in the wilderness. And I think that loneliness, depression, isolation, despair, all of those things are for us, the wilderness. And like we might see death and lifelessness all around us, but we're not yet aware that God is in our midst. And in our wilderness, in that state of vulnerability, I think that's when we can find intimacy with God. Okay, so that was amazing. You 
really spoke right there. That's that's gonna serve me. I'm gonna keep thinking about that. I mean, you said so many rich things, especially the part like we all are in our own wilderness with these emotions and more and the intimacy with God part. I hadn't quite made that connection before, but into me see is like a way to look inward where we, one of the ways we can find and connect with God or the divine. Okay, yeah, I love that. I hadn't made the connection before as well as the Hagar part. I love that this has come up in our conversation because Hagar, I think, is an excellent example of just like the universal appeal of our ancestors and iconic figures that can we can all find meaning from no matter our differences in identity or whatever, which juxtaposes with like the, all the things that society tries to tell us to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and connecting with our ancestors, that's something that's that I've been learning to cultivate and incorporate into, into my practices during the pandemic. Like nice. this year, especially, mm-hmm. I have really come to understand the vital need for ritual in honoring my body, my ancestors, and God for the sake of my well-being. And I have to credit you, Kimberly, for inspiring all of us to just revel in the blessings of nature and physical movement. Like you repeatedly bring us to to an appreciation of our own embodiment. And for me, especially in 2020, I have found that the embodiment of ritual cultivates a sense of intimacy and it fully fuses me into the present moment, which then transforms into this holy kairos. And so wait, by kairos, do you mean something related to transformation? Yes, yes. Okay. And when I connect with the past, I also connect with my ancestral kin, either by blood, spirit, or struggle. And, and this engages and it nourishes my spiritual roots. And from that sacred connection, I'm able to draw into the present a futurity for myself and for those that I'm interconnected with. Uh. So beautifully stated. And I don't know if you saw my eyes light up, but what you talked about with ritual and connecting to ancestors, I mean, prayer doesn't have to be ritual, but it doesn't mean it's not. And it made me think of a recent milestone birthday where I was in Savannah, Georgia and took a little trip over to Tybee Island, which has some unique history. Um, And I put my hands in the Atlantic Ocean's waters and I said a prayer to and for my ancestors. I looked out to the ocean and I prayed for my unknown ancestors who had never made it to those shores. And I thanked them for their life, like not just the sorrows, but the joys and not just the sacrifices, but the investments in their dreams. And until we started talking about this, I didn't even know that I really remember what I prayed for. So that to me is just like, a a sign a flashing sign that we are never alone right and connection to spirit to ancestors is always available just inaccessible something for us to tap into and wow this is such an encouragement for me to turn inward like the next time I might feel vulnerable or lonely and to dig deeper because maybe I can find some encouragement from that those and welcoming that kind of intimacy Wow. Um, yeah, you just, your story gave me chills in a good way. Uh, thank you for sharing that with me. I mean, like what, what a birthday, I mean, to celebrate your, your life and then just connected with, um, your ancestors in that way. That was, that's very beautiful. And that's very deep. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you. Um, It feels rooted, but it started from what you shared about ritual and ancestors. Yeah. And like queer people of faith have always had to alter rituals and holidays. But I mean, this year, people globally have had to alter their daily and their holy and holiday rituals to continue connecting in some way, either with one another or with the divine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, that makes me think of um, the spiritual reflection you wrote about like, connecting new ways of connecting with people and seeing God through people in new and different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for remembering that. Um, Yeah. But I hope, like, I hope, I hope knowing that brings solace for those who are struggling with loneliness to know that we're, 
all having to find new rituals together. I mean, separately, but collectively. Right. And yeah, and like, and we're doing the, all of this for our heart survival. Like we're having to partake in this new ritual of waking up to yet another pandemic day and getting up and collecting our spiritual mana in whatever that may be for each of us day by day. You're right, day by day.